Report 367, recognizing town sponsor, Senator Avon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, for the, um, and committee members. Uh, for the record, I'm Senator Kevin Avard, District 12, and I'm here before you to introduce SB 367 relative to the re regulatory status of advanced recycling manufacturing facilities. When this bill was brought before me, I was very happy to prime sponsor it uh, with, uh, with Senator Waters uh, as a co-sponsor with me. This bill is about incentivizing private investment to come to New Hampshire and develop another tool for keeping plastic out of the landfills uh, and advanced recycling pills, facilities. I don't know if you remember last year when we were going over some of the bills, we were listening to some of uh, the testimony about you know our, our, the predicament of our landfills and how that they're, you know, there's an issue there that there's a lifespan and uh, putting in uh, some plastics into the landfills that cannot be recycled is just not an option for us. So this is uh, thinking outside the box and I was very happy uh, that somebody's actually thinking outside the box uh, for New Hampshire. There are others here who can speak to the specifics of the industry and how the advanced recycling works and the language of the bill. The goal of the bill is to establish a clear regulatory path for these types of recycling facilities to be treated as manufacturing facilities and not as solid waste facilities. 15 other states have passed similar regulations to meet with the intent to attract private investments to their states and that would bring jobs, good jobs. In STEM fields and construction, as well as uh, other ways to recycle hard handled plastics. There are no such facilities in the Northeast and so we want uh, this type of manufacturing in New Hampshire. I have an amendment uh, to uh, uh, 0195S that worked out, uh, we worked out with the DES uh, the American, uh, and the American Council uh, Chemistry Council. It deletes the definition of refuse as requested by the department and it amends the language on page four regarding the authority of the department. Well, we do have the amendment. Uh, I'm not sure it is completely satisfied the department. I'm hoping it does. But I believe we have some good language here. Uh, my goal is to pass the enabling language uh, to help New Hampshire, uh, and it can help our solid waste needs by diverting uh, plastics from our landfills and help recycling and refuge of plastics and help our economy and bring some good manufacturing jobs in STEM fields. I think it's a win-win, it's a great bipartisan bill, and uh, I'm gonna defer all the questions for those who are here to testify on, on the specifics of the language, if that's okay. And thank you very much. Are there any questions for Senator Avon? Thank you. None. All right. Thank you. Okay, seeing as it, it is now 11.20, we're going to open up the hearing on Senate Bill 367, and I'll call on Senator Kevin Avard to introduce the bill. Welcome to Environment NAG. Thank you, Representative, Mr. Chair. Really appreciate it. It's nice to see friendly faces, people smiling. Happy we're day. We're always happy yes. in NAG. It's a great committee. It is a great committee. <laughs> and worthy of, of all the praise that you put in and a lot of work, we know that. And so uh, anyway, for the, for the record, I'm Senator Kevin Avard, and I am the prime sponsor of this bill, SB 367 relative, let's see, uh, relative to regulatory status, advanced recycling and manufacturing facilities. Uh, so uh, I appear before you to introduce 367 relative to the regulatory status, advanced recycling and manufacturing facilities. When this bill was brought before me, I was glad to prime sponsor it. And I think that we have a, a lot of bipartisan support for this. And, uh, and I'm thankful for all those who did co-sponsor with me. Um, the bill is about uh, incentivizing private investment to come to New Hampshire and develop another tool for keeping plastic out of the landfills. I was really excited to hear that there is an alternative. We have uh, 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 people that are interested in, uh, in looking at New Hampshire, so uh, we want to make sure that these plastics are out of the landfills and, uh, um, and advance in creating an, an advanced recycling facility. There are others here who are gonna to speak to the specifics of the industry and how the advanced recycling works. 
The goal of the bill is very simple. It is to establish a clear regulatory path that this type of recycling facility is treated as a manufacturing facility and not a solid waste facility. 18 other states have passed similar laws with the intent to attract private investment to the states that would bring uh, good jobs in STEM fields and construction, as well as other ways to recycle the hard to handle plastics. There are no such no other such facilities in the Northeast, and we should want this type of manufacturing definitely in New Hampshire. SB 367 passes uh, passed the Senate unanimously on a bipartisan voice vote. We did amend the bill to address questions brought forward by the Department of Environmental Services uh, about their authority, and the department was involved in drafting, drafting the amendment and, and, and support this bill. I'm, I'm pretty sure they still do. And my goal is to pass this enabling le legislation to help New Hampshire. It can help with our solid waste needs by diverting the hard to recycle plastics from our landfills. It can help recycle and re uh, reuse the plastics and help our economy by bringing good manufacturing jobs uh, in STEM fields. It's a win-win for New Hampshire. Uh, we, we labored hard on this bill, and when I thought, well, there are plastics, as you know, that go into the landfill that will never be recycled. They will never be recycled. They're there, and they're, they're, they're causing harm. This is an idea that will uh, take that stuff from the landfills or, or, or prevent it from going into the landfills, which have a lifespan in itself, and recycle it and reuse it. Uh, a lot of people, you know, aren't familiar with what's going on with the landfills and, uh, and, and the lifespan of those landfills. And, of course, when you continually dump plastics that are not recyclable into them, they just uh, create a situation where the lifespan of that, that landfill will diminish. Um, we come up with good ideas. And uh, one of the things that, that troubles me is that when we come up with a good idea, we get legislators later on that, that didn't think they were a good idea, and we, we, we tend to pull the rug out from, from underneath these good ideas. And I think like the bio plants is a, is a, is a similar situation. The, um, the thinking outside the box got me really excited about this bill. It really is, is an idea that, that its time has come to pass, and I think this is a I, I just hope that you, you see it the same way that I do, uh, that we have an opportunity uh, to preserve our landfills and to uh, protect our environment with this type of legislation. So with that, um, I'll take any questions, but if, if you have any real technical questions, I think the department is here that can answer those as well. But thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. I'll, I'll open up with one. Uh, did you work with uh, DES on drafting the new language for this bill? Yes. So you addressed, I, I know they're going to speak, but you're comfortable with Indirectly, the, yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. So you're comfortable with uh, the language changes and their recommendations? Very much, and we hope that you are too. Thank you. Representative Kaplan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, <coughs> and thank you for taking my question, Senator. Uh, can you hear me? <laughs> I can. Okay. Um, I'm glad you share uh, a similar concern with reducing the, the plastic from the waste stream in New Hampshire. That's a, a great lot of hand. Um, Representative, could you get closer to your mic? Yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> I'm reading your lips you, at this yeah. point. <laughs> are, you, are you familiar with the reduce, reuse, recycle paradigm for, for uh, solving waste issues? I've, in passing, yes, not, not, but I, I've heard something similar to that. Where would a plant of this type fit into that paradigm? In New Hampshire? Uh, in yeah. I, I, the, we don't have one. Well, up in, up in the, our whole area, we don't have anything that that supports us. So right. this is an idea that that we, we need something in the region that right. would support. Well, this. I mean, to solve the waste crisis, however, mm -hmm. where would it fit in the paradigm of reduce, reuse, recycle? Because the, the idea is that reduction is the, is the number one. It, aim. It, it's important, but so, it would be in the recycling area. This is this so is the third one down. <laughs> this is the lowest one down. Uh, I guess if you want to categorize it that way, it's, it's still part of the paradigm, right? Okay. So it doesn't work without it. Right. Yeah. But in, in terms of solving the waste crisis, we always try to reduce before we... We want to reduce, that's right. But, but there are plastics that, that um, nobody knows how to recycle at this point, and uh, to be able to reuse and recycle, that's, that's part of it, right? Thank you, Representative. Yeah. Any other questions for the Senator? Uh, Representative Bixby. Yes, thank you for taking my question. 
Um, so uh, let me say at the outset that I like the concept of uh, being able to really recycle things that are not or as, as easily recycled as as, um, as, so, as the you know a couple of types of bottle plastic. Um, but I just have some questions about um, the about the language of the bill. Um, so uh, in uh, Let's see, uh, first page at line 15, uh, for the purposes of the chapter, advanced recycling facilities shall not be considered facilities, uh, solid waste facilities, solid waste management facilities. I'm not quite sure why just plain facilities would not, would be there. Is that something to do with a um, thing, the way things are written in current rule? Uh, so shall not be considered facilities and then commerce, solid waste facilities. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a, uh, don't normally know. Okay. Yeah, and, and if that might be a redundancy or something to that effect, uh, maybe that could be struck, but I'm not sure. Okay, maybe so, so maybe that's something I should bring up with yeah. someone from the department. Uh, the next um, question, the next thing is at line 23, it's in the uh, bold italics, products yep. derived from advanced recycling shall not be considered waste derived products or require certification as waste derived products. Why is that line there? I think uh, part of the discussion that we had is that th these are not, uh, th these are not, uh, this is a manufacturing bill. This is for those products uh, that pertain to manufacturing and they're considered uh, products uh, not, it's not refuge, it's basically, uh, uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of the word, uh, a secondary raw material. Raw material. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's it's raw material, and I think that the uh, the idea that uh, this is going to end up being uh, 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 part of a waste management it, it, that's not what this is. This is for specifically recycling things that would end up in waste management. Instead, it goes towards recycling. Okay. Uh, so it, it's uh, we want recycling. We don't have it in New Hampshire. Okay. Follow up. Yes. So. Um, one of the things, so we have a, the way, I'm sure you're familiar with our waste uh, management pyramid that uh, has, you know, the, you know, basically landfilling at the bottom and reusing at the top or not making at the top, not having it waste in the first place at the top. And somewhere in the middle of that is, uh, is recycling and reuse. One, and, and um, so, and, and this would be specifically recycling, not reuse. I mean, there are two different categories, but no, we're not gonna, I don't want to quibble about that. What I want to, uh, my question is actually about, uh, so the, um, the current waste management plan has uh, waste reduction and diversion goals, and I assume that the next one is going to have those as well. And I'm wondering whether material that is diverted from the waste stream for this purpose would still be considered diverted from the waste stream and count towards our ability to get, you know, keep things out of landfills with this line in here about it not being considered waste. Uh, I'll let the uh, other, other people speak to that specific part of the bill, but um, I do believe that what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of plastics that go into the landfill that cannot be recycled. This is thinking outside the box. And uh, there, there'll be a reduction, at least from New Hampshire, of uh, the, the plastics that are going into the landfills. So uh, you, we have some experts to talk about whether there's a byproduct or, or something to that effect that will, uh, I think, will address some of your concerns. There. Right. So I, I, just to clarify, my, my, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it, I, I just want to make sure that when we use this process to avoid putting plastics into landfills, we're getting credit for it. Oh, we're going to get credit for it, okay. of course. <laughs> okay. This is a big feather. <laughs> I, I just don't want to have an inadvertent piece of language sort yeah. of uh, preventing that. Um, okay, so... Um, Did you have more you wanted to ask? I think, I think the rest of my questions may be better directed to uh, someone further down the line. Thank you very Thank much, you. Representative Bixby. Any further questions for Senator Avery? Mr. Mr. Chair, there was one over there on the right. Oh, sorry, Representative Murray, I couldn't see you. No, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, for taking my question. So, and this may or may not be something that um, you are able to answer, but I was curious with regards to on page line four, 
starting, um, excuse me, page three, lines four through 13, roughly thereof. Um, it, it, when it's defining solid waste, there is reference to potential burial locations within 75 feet of any drinking water supply. Mm -hmm. um, and I was curious as to how that might jive with some of the other things we're considering elsewhere uh, with respect to the 75 feet. Um, and additionally, um, whether or not there is an intent to bury anything, why, why that statute is in there. I'm going to let the department handle that one, if that's okay. Fair. Yeah, they're, they're pretty reverse to the, uh, the technical parts. I Thank think there you. was another one over here. Yep, I have uh, Representative Stapleton first. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. I don't see anything in the bill here about incineration or high, high heat destruction. This sounds like an industrial process, what you're forwarding in the bill mm -hmm. for breaking down and reutilization of these components. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Thank you. Yeah. Representative Dutsey. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. Um, in the beginning, you said uh, you uh, you were asked to bring this bill forward. Can you tell us who asked you to bring the bill forward? Uh, yeah, uh, I could. Uh, uh, Jody Grimbles brought it to my attention, and she represents. Who was that? Uh, Jody Grimbles. She is one of the lobbyists here. Okay. She brought her, it to my her, attention. Her organization. That, I beg your pardon. Her organization. I, Jody? I'm not familiar with the organization. Okay, so it was the American Chemistry yeah. Council that asked you to, okay. Jody, thank you. All right. Okay, thank yeah. you. There was another question. Any, any further questions? Uh, Representative Kappel. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you for taking my follow-on question. <clears throat> Would you, is it fair to say this is a fairly new industrial process? I think there's some other states that have, have adopted it. Adopted the regulation or the actual industrial process? Both. Okay, so how many plants are in existence? Um, my numbers, I thought I, I understood that there were at least six or nine. Okay, so it's, I'll be, it's, I'm it's fair to say it's not, it's not a widespread industrial process. No, in we're going to be the leader on that. Okay, but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's great. I, I have no problem with being the leader in industrial uh, processes that work, but this is, it's not really a tested uh, Oh, I think it it's, it's been tested in a lab, but it's not been tested at a commercial scale. I believe it has. It has. I think okay. you'll, you'll hear testimony that it has. Were you concerned at all uh, at some of the potential downside of the byproducts of a, of a, of a chemical and industrial process? When I you're think at with this? any manufacturing, there's always a downside, whether you're a, a, a tool and die, there's a downside. You know, there's any type of manufacturing you have, there's always a downside, there's always uh, a, a byproduct of something. However, what we have right now is, is a byproduct going into the landfills that will never come out and we have no solution. And we have a bunch of fear about moving forward, and it's time we step out of that fear and move forward with, with ideas that can uh, protect our environment. We have that byproduct already. We already have that downside in play, and it's been in play for multiple generations. It's time. It's time we come up with an idea that, hey, we, we got a plan. Is there a perfect plan? There's always a downside to every plan. This is a thinking outside the box. This is a way to say, hey, look, there's a byproduct that's already, there's a downside that's already being generated after generation after generation, and it's going into the landfills. And we can second guess it, but all we're doing is with this particular bill enabling the conversation to go forward. This does not license any particular plant at this point, but this allows the conversation to go forward. Can we can we fix it? Yeah. Are there downsides? Tell me a bill that doesn't have a downside. Tell me a, a manufacturing company that is 100% all, you know, I just drove to New Jersey. <laughs> is there a downside? Uh, there, there may be, uh, but I'm not aware of any, but what we're doing right now, we're only setting the stage for the conversation to continue and to, instead of saying no, 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 hey, let's, let's figure out a plan and work together. And this had bipartisan support in the Senate, which in itself, I'm, I'll just let you know, that's a big deal. 
That's a big deal. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative Bixby. Yeah, just one more question, which is, um, why is a redefinition of of the uh, plastics feedstock for this uh, as not solid waste, uh, or why actually let me phrase it as why is it an impediment to have it labeled as solid waste? I think it changes the narrative of what, what's going on, and it seems as though narratives are, are, are a, a good way to kill things, uh, good ideas. And so it, it isn't, it, it's, it's basically raw material that, did, that is being used. Uh, if, if, if it's not the label as raw material, then guess what? It goes into the landfill in the region. So uh, we can quibble about that part of it, Representative, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's already going into the landfills. It's not longer going to China anymore. They stopped that. It's going into the landfills all over the place. And there's no plan. This is a plan. Well, so I, I guess yeah. let me just narrow down the question a little bit. Sure. Um, is there something about the fact that it is currently considered solid waste that would prevent a company from using it as a raw material? Again, I'm going to go right back to what I just said. Now, I, I, this is just this is a purely regulatory question. Maybe I should ask. Yeah, maybe you should ask them. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I'm a little defensive on that. Because what yeah. I'm I'm afraid of is that there are people that like to change uh, definitions, and definitions mean everything. Semantics are the atom bomb of persuasion. I learned that in high school. All right, we'll, so we'll save that one for DES the, then. Yeah. Right. Right. Representative Murray, you have one final question. Yeah, I think I'll wait for DES as well. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you, Senator. Oh, wait oh, a minute. Oh. We have one. You almost got away. Representative Comptoir. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator. Uh, is it possible for me to get a copy of your written testimony? Of my written testimony? I don't have a written one. I'm, I'm all verbal. Oh, yeah, maybe I do. Yeah, sure. You can have that. <laughs> okay. Thank I'm you. I'm all verbiage. And this is such a nice committee. I really appreciate the questions and friendly faces. We appreciate you coming in. Thank all you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay.